This is The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. And also welcome to this edition of The Bill Black Report, who's our next guest. He recently authored a blog titled, Zero Prosecutions Aren't Few Enough. Wall Street Wants SEC Sanctions Reduced to DMV Points. Now joining us to discuss this is Bill Black. He's an associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's a white collar criminologist and a former former financial regulator. He's the author of The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. As always, thank you so much for joining us, Bill. Thank you. Good to be back. Bill, what are you blogging on this week? So Joseph Fischera is a head of a Wall Street advisory firm, and he's one of the sometimes good guys uh, that is, uh, for example, warned about auction rate securities as a dangerous scam and criticized major investment banks for uh, derivatives that they've sold uh, to cities. So he's easily in the top 10 percent of the distribution uh, of uh, Wall Street CEOs. But even he, and that's sort of the point, uh, has just come out on November 6th and said, you know, we're treating Wall Street too harshly. Now, Wall Street, as we've talked about, has zero convictions of any of the uh, senior officers who actually led the fraud epidemics that caused the crisis. But that's not sufficiently weak for Fischera. He says that uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission should not uh, have the power to remove an investment bank's license to sell securities, for example, just because it's committed a massive fraud. Uh, instead, uh, frauds should have a schedule of points uh, like the Department of Motor Vehicles has in many states. And so, you know, for one act of appraisal fraud that could actually be thousands of acts, maybe you'd get four points. And uh, over the course of six years, if you got, he doesn't give the number, but maybe 16 points, uh, then and only then could your license be removed. So this is the idea that um, fraud is really just like driving without your seatbelt. You know, there's no moral uh, element at all to defrauding other people of tens of billions of dollars. And that you actually have a right you're in finance, but only if you're in finance, uh, to a certain number of felonies before anything can happen seriously. And he explicitly says that uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission should have no power to remove your license if you've only committed one series of felonies. And remember, this series of felonies could be 10,000 people that you defrauded, or indeed millions of people that you defrauded. Uh, but uh, it, like every dog gets its bite, uh, every corporation that uh, issues securities would get its massive fraud. And if it didn't get caught again within the next six years, well then, like DMV, your points would be eliminated. And you could commit your new fraud uh, with impunity. On top of that, he says... Well, you know, we really have to uh, believe in this too big to jail and too big to sanction stuff uh, for the Securities and Exchange Commission because he says that there's a real uh, contradiction between the principles of financial regulation and the principles uh, of justice. Uh, in other words, uh, if we want to insist on justice, uh, we're going to have bad regulation because we're going to sanction big firms and then uh, those firms will fail and, and therefore we'll have financial crises. And so the answer is to leave the frauds in power and not only to not prosecute them, but to make it very, very hard to take any serious enforcement action against them as well. Bill, is Fichera serious? Is this being taken seriously, such a proposal? He is absolutely dead on serious. Uh, and as I said, he's actually within uh, the valley of the morally blind. 
the one-eyed king uh, type of thing. He's not one of the worst people in Wall Street by a very long margin. And this tells you how deep the rot is in Wall Street, that uh, somebody that is, as I said, you know, certainly in the best 10 percent of Wall Street CEOs uh, has such a, an absurd proposal in mind. Uh, your viewers who know the old uh, Roman maxim in Latin, you know, fiat justitia ruat calum, uh, let justice be done though the heavens fall. Now that might sound naive, but the best way to keep the heavens from falling is to insist on justice, particularly when the people who uh, are trying to escape accountability are immensely wealthy and politically powerful. So the best way to destroy a financial system is to leave the frauds in charge. That is going to produce what we call a Gresham's dynamic in which bad ethics drives good ethics out of the marketplace. And he, uh, Fischera, actually admits that the repeal of Glass-Steagall, uh, which separated commercial and investment banking, was a disaster. And he admits that moving away from uh, what was the rule for hundreds of years, uh, that things like um, investment banks were owned as partnerships. And you had, as a general partner, what's called joint and several liability. That means you're responsible for all the debts of the company, whether you cause them or not. And of course, uh, under that system, you as a partner in one of these investment banks had an overwhelming incentive to police your fellow partners and making sure that they didn't screw up and take advantage of people. And you had an enormous incentive not to make new partners who didn't have the highest level of integrity, because when they screwed up, again, you could lose your entire wealth. Um, so, you know, uh, as I said, this is not a crazy person, and or at least is not normally considered a crazy person, who admits the problems and then wants to make them worse. Right, and what is the SEC's response to something like this? Well, the SEC is uh, not responding officially to this, but the the more the broader point, of course, is it's not just the Justice Department that has not held people accountable. It, it is largely the SEC that has failed to hold people accountable as well, and in particular, the folks that they don't hold accountable are the most powerful uh, Wall Street CEOs who led the fraud epidemics that caused the financial crisis. And, and uh, you know, we know self-regulation or even demerit points of this sort uh, doesn't really work. Uh, what are some of the solutions you think that might work besides prosecutions? Well, the two things that would work really well are precisely what he talked about. We should bring back Glass-Steagall, and we should bring back uh, real partnerships with joint and several liability. Uh, and both of those things would be uh, enormously beneficial. And so you would get, there's no tension between good financial regulation and the principles of justice. Uh, good financial regulation is impossible unless you hold the most powerful people in Wall Street responsible, uh, both criminally and uh, to uh, the best of your civil and enforcement powers when they commit these kinds of violations. So the best things to do are those things that create the right incentive structures so that people never screw up in the first place. And the big three things that you want to do are bring back Glass-Steagall, bring back joint and several liability in terms of partnerships, and fix modern executive and professional compensation, uh, which is extremely criminogenic. And then the fourth thing would be to end the international race to the bottom of financial regulation in which big banks try to put nations in competition with each other 
for who is willing to offer the weakest regulation. Bill, um, I think it would be wonderful if you would come back and we can dig into each one of your four recommendations uh, further and discuss what this really means in terms of being able to um, you know, address them. Absolutely. Uh, we can have a real recipe for how you fix things. Okay, great. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Bill. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.